morning so uh, as i said uh, i plan to have only uh, one hour for this class uh, for the class session today as i am not in uthm and the the tools is uh, quite limited eh? uh, with the uh, poor internet connection i use my uh, my phone for the internet um, so uh, today i plan to uh to finish chapter two uh, where uh, last week we have actually looked at uh, uh, more than half of uh, chapter two uh, has been completed actually so last week we have learned uh, or look at what is uh, the processor core architecture what is inside the uh, microprocessor the ARM microprocessor what are the resources that we have and uh, we also look at uh, have looked at uh, what is called a uh, programmer's model where it is used uh, by a programmer by us uh, we as a programmer uh, the resources uh, the internal registers in the ARM microprocessor that we will use later on when uh, when we want to write a program for the uh, microprocessor in chapter 3 and today we will continue with uh, memory organization and also the last part is the instruction set architecture so uh, before this uh, in, in the previous lecture actually i have uh, introduced to you what is uh, instruction set architecture uh, and today we will look at uh, more detail uh, what is uh, instruction instruction set architecture which is very important to uh, to know uh, before we uh, start to learn how to program the microprocessor in uh, chapter 3 and so on so uh, last week we have looked at this already uh, the uh, this the block diagram of uh, the internal uh, architecture of the ARM processor core and uh, I have explained uh, all the parts already and also the uh, what we call the one Newman architecture and Howard architecture what are the differences between the two uh, and here we have looked at a uh, programmer model there is the resources that we will use later on in our program we have uh, internal register. This register is actually uh, the same as what we have learned in the interdesign, where it is used to store data temporarily eh, in the, the microprocessor before we uh, we want to manipulate the data. And we also have a uh, spatial register here used to uh, uh, for uh, status uh to 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 see the status of the processor after we uh, execute uh, some of the uh, arithmetic operation for example and uh, here are the interrupt pass register and the control register and uh, explanation uh, done already last week uh, we also look at have looked at uh, here condition code or condition flags yeah, how is it uh, set based on the operation that we uh, perform and today we will look at this memory organization so uh, how uh, the ARM microprocessor uh, organize the memory or view the memory eh? so this is very important in the uh, actually all of the microprocessor that we have right although uh, whether it is intel microprocessor uh, amd microprocessor or any microprocessor that we have so uh, the memory organiza organization is uh, is uh, very important parts of uh, learning microprocessor so as we know yeah we discussed already last week memory can be uh, conceptually viewed as uh, a storage element that hold data and each 
element holding a fixed number of bit and having an address so uh, yes we we have learned last week yeah i have shown to you uh, normally the memory is drawn uh, like this yeah we draw a memory like a box and this box we will have uh, many location All right and each location uh, has very uh, unique uh, has a unique address so for example this is address number zero and we write the address in the uh, hexadecimal number this is address number one number two number three number four and and so on until the last address of our memory and uh, this will be the size of the uh, memory and normally the size is 8 bit yeah in one byte right 8 bit or we call it one byte for each location all right but some of the uh, memory in uh, especially in uh, digital digital processing uh, uh, processor uh, there is a type of memory that has uh, the size of 16 bit yeah? for example is that one location is 16 bit yeah but most of the time yeah, the microprocessor use 8 bit for one location or one address yeah? so means that address number zero can store data or 8-bit data address number one can store another 8-bit data and so on and so forth so if we write the value inside the uh, microprocessor for example in hexadecimal as well so we can say that here is one two for example so this this means that this is uh one bit value uh sorry eight bit value which is zero 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 one 0010 all right in binary and this is one in hexadecimal and this is two in hexadecimal or maybe the next address uh, we have a b or in binary is 1010 uh, b is 1011 right so that is how uh, we uh, represent the memory in uh, microprocessor and uh, when we look at this uh, that is why uh, we uh, represent the size of the memory as uh, byte uh, one byte two byte one kilobyte uh, one megabyte one gigabyte one terabyte and so on so it is because one location is eight bit or one byte yeah? so uh, for example uh, 1k is one kilobyte of memory is actually equal to two power of 10 location all right means that here we have 2 power of 10 location means that we have 1024 location all right or 1k that is why in computer 1k is not equal to 1000 yeah not 1 uh, 1000 but 1024 eh? because 2 power of 10 is 1024 and we uh, operate in a binary, num binary number so this means that if we have uh, 1k memory uh, 1 kilobyte memory we have the address starting from address 0 until the last address will be 1023 right so this is the the last address and uh, 
the total location is 1024 because we have we start at number zero all right number zero including every location here the total is 1024 right so the last address uh, this is in in decimal yeah in binary so you we can have uh, can change the value right using calculator so it should be 3 ff yeah so in uh, hexadecimal will be 3 ff the last address for 1k memory what about uh, uh, 1 megabyte yeah 1 megabyte is 2 power of 20 all right so if you look at 2 power of 20 2 power of uh, 2 power of 20 is this yeah 1 megabyte yeah? so which is uh 1048 this is uh 1 megabyte means that 2 power of 20 So the last address will be, what is that? Will be this number. This is in in decimal. In uh, memory representation, we use hexadecimal. So you need to change to uh, hexadecimal. So uh, we can have here one zero four eight five seven five. Yeah. 7, 5, not 6, because the last location will be, will always minus 1, eh? because we start with uh, with 0. So when we change to hexadecimal, it is this, yeah? F, 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 F. So the last address will be F, 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 F. All right? So this is 20 bit address bus, eh? the size of address bus or 2 power of 20. Okay. Now let's look at our in our case where we have the address the size of the address in uh, this yeah the block diagram of the uh, ARM microprocessor we look at the here the address bus eh Look at the size of the address bus 0 to 31 means that the size is 32 bit yeah the size is 32 bit means that the address of the memory can have from 0 up to 2 power of 32 this will be the last address so 2 power of 32 if we look at here this is 4 giga 4 gigabyte yeah so this is equivalent to 4 gb 4 gigabyte so for arm microprocessor yeah, the 32 bit arm microprocessor the address uh, the memory size is 4 giga gigabyte yeah, the maximum uh address of the memory so when we draw the arm microprocessor uh, the memory of the arm microprocessor so we can have something like this so if we start with zero so is this is uh 32 bit yeah here you see if this is 20 bit we can see that because uh one digit hexa is four bit right four bit so how many how many hexa digit that we have here we have one two three four five yeah so means that the size here is the uh 20 bit right four multiplied by five 20 right in our case, we have 32 bit. 
for ARM microprocessor, we have 32 bit. So to get 32 bit, we need to have how many hexa digit? We need to have eight, yeah, Be yeah, because eight multiplied by four is 32. So to write the address for the ARM microprocessor, we need to have eight hexa digit. So we will start with zero zero zero. This is hexadecimal. Zero 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 until the last address will be. Will be. F F F F F F F F. Right. The previous address will be. F F F F F F F E. All right. After this, after zero, we have zero 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 one until F F F F F F F E, and the last one will be F F F. F, 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 F. So if we change, you can see, yeah? If we change, uh, minus one, yeah? Uh, if I minus this number to one, and I change to hexadecimal, and I have F, 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 F. So exactly this one. Right? So that is for the ARM 32-bit microprocessor. If uh, the size is bigger than that, so we need to check uh, at the address bus uh, to see what is the size of the memory. So the uh, to know the size of the memory is, you need to look at address bus, uh, the size of the address bus. So for this, uh, for example, in this case, we have 32-bit address bus means that the size of the memory is this, this, 4 gigabyte, right, which is quite big. So now this is uh, what uh, we call a memory map, yeah, or how the ARM microprocessor, uh, the memory of the ARM microprocessor is organized, right, or in short, we call it memory map. Eh? And uh, we start the address of the memory from uh, from the bottom of the here. This is the memory, and we start from the bottom. Eh? In the previous example, I start from the from the top. Eh? Actually, it is the same, but in this example, we start from the bottom. So we can see that the first address is uh, zero, and the last address is of course we have eight uh, f hexa digit. This is the last address. And uh, in uh, every microprocessor in the world, actually, uh, we uh, actually partition the memory into uh, smaller, uh, smaller parts uh, like this. And each part is, uh, is dedicated for a specific uh, function. For example, in this case, uh, uh, we have from address 0 to 1FFF, FFFF is dedicated for the code. All right, means that the program that we write will be stored in this location. And the next address, eh, just the next one, next one, all right, from this address to this address is reserved for SRAM. This is uh, internal RAM of, of the uh, microprocessor. And uh, from this address to this address is for peripheral, and this one for this one is for external RAM. For uh, external devices is from here to here, and for system level, for example, for interrupt or control signal, controller, control register is from uh, this to this, right? So this is how the uh, ARM microprocessor organize the memory. Uh, and it is it is not fixed like this. Eh? It is actually depend on uh, the manufacturer that fabricate or manufacture the uh, the the processor. All right. So it is depend on the manufacturer to decide eh, what is the size of the code eh, or what is the size of the memory that what they want to dedicate it for the code and uh, for others. So this is for just for example, right? So 
we will see in chapter 4 the specific uh, memory map for the uh, ARM Cortex M3 that we will use in, uh, in this course. Eh? This is for general example of how the memory or how we uh, organize the memory in the microprocessor. And each microprocessor has its own uh, memory organization uh, like this. Now we will go to the next where it is uh, addressing modes. Eh? So this one actually we have learned in, uh, in the previous chapter, but uh, we will look again. Eh? Uh, because this is very important in uh, in uh, studying the RISC architecture, all right? And please remember that the ARM microprocessor that we learn in this uh, in this course is using uh, this uh, RISC architecture. So uh, most of the RISC architecture using what we call the load and store uh, architecture, and uh, when we talk about addressing mode, addressing mode is actually the way of the microprocessor to access the data in the memory, uh, whether we want to read uh, data from the memory into the microprocessor or we want to write the data from the microprocessor into the, the memory. So we will use what we call the addressing mode. right? So here we will look at a very simple addressing mode that is uh, used in uh, ARM microprocessor. Right before that, let's look at this again, load and store architecture. Uh, again, when we talk about load and store architecture, so when the microprocessor or when we want to uh, manipulate the data and our data is inside the memory, so again, if we have the memory like this, Let's for example, the memory is name M and uh, this is address 0 and this is address uh, 1, uh, 2, 3, 4 until uh, maybe 3FF here. Alright, 1K memory. So let's say for example, our data is in uh, address number 3 and number 4. Right, we have uh, maybe in number three, we have one, two, number four, we have three, four in hexadecimal. And we want to manipulate this data or want to add these two data, right? Uh, they look uh, 12 plus uh, one, two plus three, four, right? And uh, when we use RISC micro microprocessor, we need to have the instruction to load the data from the memory into the internal uh, register inside the CPU. So we need to have one instruction to load the data. For example, we load into R0, right? So I use uh, RTL notation here because we are uh, not learning the uh, instruction set yet. So, uh, but you uh, actually familiar with RTN notation already, we can use RTN notation. So we move the data from memory address 3 to R0. This one is using one instruction, all right? One instruction already to do this. And uh, we need to use another instruction, instruction number 2, to add the value, which is uh, for, uh, uh, before that, you need to to have another instruction to to move the data from memory number number four to R1 before you can add. So this you need two instruction already. And then instruction number three. Now you can add. And uh, if you want to store in 
for example in this location location number two the result is here so you need to to transfer the value uh, the result from r0 to to m to m2 right location number two so you need at least uh, four instruction here in order to add the number in the memory in RISC. Okay, but this is different if you use CISC. Because in CISC, you have the instruction that you actually can straight away manipulate data in memory. So you can do this thing actually. Uh, M2, M3 plus M4, and you get the result already using only one instruction. Right? That is the case of CISC. You don't you don't need to load the data into the internal register using a separate instruction. All right? So this thing will do for you automatically using one one instruction only and you get the result already so that is the advantage of CISC but of course uh, when you do this yeah, when you have a very complicated instruction like this of course the hardware to implement that is more complicated as compared to RISC okay so CISC although you have uh, uh, easy easier uh, instruction you have many instruction many options to do a complicated job uh, in uh, in in one instruction but the cost is that you have a more complicated hardware yeah? because to implement this the hardware is definitely uh, more complex as compared to uh, moving the data to the register first and then add and then save the data back to the memory Okay, so that is the difference between uh, uh, CISC and uh, RISC in terms of uh, load and store uh, architecture. And uh, when we look at the instruction of the ARM microprocessor to do load and store, this is the example or the format of the instruction. We will learn in detail in chapter 3 actually, but I will introduce to you in this chapter uh, 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 a simple example first. All right. So the format is like this. The instruction name is str. str is for store or this is or yeah? uh, store or ldr all right? using the same format. format. So rt is the destination register. All right, where the uh, the de destination that we want to store the data when we load from the memory, and RM is the uh, uh, address of the memory inside another register, right? And offset is optional. We can have offset or don't have offset. Yeah? Later on, I will uh, explain how to uh, use the offset. And this is very powerful uh, features that we can use to write a very uh, flexible program later on. Okay, so for example, uh, we have instruction like this. Yeah, LDR, R9, comma, in bracket, square bracket, R12, 20, means that this is the address in the memory and we need to figure out what is address that we want to go into the memory uh, or get the data from the memory and store that value in R, R9. Eh? When we're talking about R9 or R12, it's actually this, yeah? It's actually uh, this. Okay, R9 is this and R12 is this. All right, so that's why this programmer model is very useful for us as a programmer because when we write the program later on, we will use this. Okay, 
So let's look at this uh, very simple example. When we want to load the data from uh, from the memory, and let's uh, use a very simple example first, where the instruction is LDR. Uh, art 9, Art 12, all right? So this is a little bit different from this example. I will go back to this example uh, after after this. Uh, but before that, I want you and one I want you to understand uh, this first. Uh, this 20 is called the offset. Eh? So just now I said that offset is optional. All right. So in this example, uh, we have offset. But uh, before that, let's look at the example that we don't have an uh, offset. All right. So this one, we don't have offset. So what is mean by this, actually? So uh, let's look at the memory here and we have two register that involve in this operation which is art 9 and art 12 so let's draw these two register we have art 9 oh sorry art 9 art 12 okay so what is the size of this register this is 32 bit, yeah. Remember, the ARM microprocessor is 32 bits. That means that the size of the internal register is 32 bit. Okay. So, for example, in R9, uh, initially we have 32 bit number, number zero, all are zero. Okay, hexadecimal, and R12 is. Uh, one zero hexadecimal. So in our memory, we have location zero, location one, and so on until we have the last location is uh, eight digit hexa F, right? So this is zero 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 one. And we have, uh, this is location number two. Let's say that uh, this is location number, the one that we are looking at, which is one zero, right? So that means uh, this instruction is to get the data that is located in this address. And the address is in R12. So in R12, we have one zero, the address is one zero means that we get the data that is pointed by R12 or what is inside R12. Inside R12 is this means that we need to go to this address and for example here we have AB inside this one zero AB and remember the size of this is 8 bit and AB is 8 bit means that we go to this address, yeah, this address, which is this, and get the AB and transfer a copy into R9. So after we execute this instruction, what we will have in R9 is AB, 8 bit. All right, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, AB in R9. Right, because the data is 8 bit. So we have 8 bit data in R9. So that is called the load instruction. And uh, the store instruction is the same format as this one. The only difference is that the name of the instruction. So for the store, instead of LDR, this is ST, TR. So if we change to str, it means that we store what is pointed by art 12. This is the location that we want to store and we uh, transfer or copy the value inside art 9 into 
into this. So the location is R12. And here R12 we have 10 means that we go to 10. So that is str. And this is called addressing mode. Eh? Right? Uh, means that the way we access the memory is using this type of address, addressing mode. And this is called actually uh, indirect addressing. Right? Because the register is not directly specified in the in the instruction but it is inside this register so it is indirectly uh, specify the address uh, that we want to go in the register okay so that is mean by addressing mode and if we have index what is mean by index so uh, for this example we have index 20. So this 20 is actually uh, uh, not index, sorry. This is called an offset, right? If we have an offset, so we need to get the address from the offset and also from here. So the offset means that we need to add the value inside the, and this is, let's, uh, using load again so let's for example our instruction is this we have the offset now the offset is 20 this means that the address that we want to go is not is not this anymore means that we have a new address. The address is based on this plus the offset actually. So we have 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0 plus the offset 20. So we have what, 3, 0. So this is the address that we want to look at actually. So maybe here the address is 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 3, 0. So maybe inside here we have uh, CD. So when we execute this instruction, what we will have here in R9 is not AB anymore, but CD. Because of the offset. So here the addressing mode is called indirect addressing with offset so that is mean by uh, addressing mode and we will learn in detail in chapter 3 yeah so this is just an introduction uh, to this okay okay so any question on this okay Okay. If negative means that you plus with the negative number, for example, if uh, if this, yeah, go back to this again. For example, the offset is uh, is uh, negative twenty is not I uh, cannot because R uh, twelve is uh, ten, right? When we minus twenty, twenty we have minus ten. This is uh, this is impossible in this example in this example so in this example for example if the offset is minus 5 right minus 5 so the address that we look at now is this plus minus 5 so we have we have what 1, 0, minus 5. Remember, this is hexadecimal. Yes, this is should be should be B. So we will look at address. Uh, for example, B is un, somewhere between uh, between 1 and 10, right? So uh, let's say this this one is B. So we have another uh, address. 
zero 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 b and inside here for example we have five six right so instead of cd here we will have five six okay so the offset can be negative no problem but remember if you have uh, if your base this is called a base address in r12 r12 is the base address so in your program if your base address is 10 you cannot have an offset that more than minus 10 all right because minus 10 you will go back to address 0 0 already and if you have offset minus 20 so it's not it is not possible because it will be negative address and we don't have negative address in in in, in microprocessor so now we uh, continue a little bit more now we go to the what we call uh, an instruction set architecture or in short isa right so after this after this when you see isa isa is actually stand for instruction set architecture and this is very important in uh, every microprocessor uh, because it's defined the type of or the architecture that uh, uh, of that microprocessor so for example intel microprocessor has its own uh, instruction set architecture the arm microprocessor has its own instruction set architecture it is unique to the microprocessor so the ARM has uh, a very specific, a very unique instruction set architecture. So what is uh, instruction set architecture? Uh, this is actually the, uh, the machine code or machine language. Yeah. What is machine language? Machine language is the language of 0 and 1 or binary number. Okay. So remember last week when I uh, give you an example how the microprocessor works. All right, so this is actually based on the instruction. Uh, so the instruction is in, in the form of binary number. So for example, is our, if our instruction is 8-bit in size. Eh? So this, for example, we have 100, 1111. So this is our instruction. And this instruction is stored in the memory all right in the code section remember the uh, the uh, memory organization uh, just now the memory map so the code area is stored uh, this kind of information and uh, this is the program and when the microprocessor read the uh, instruction from the memory it will decode it will be decoded in the instruction decoder and this decoder right remember last week we have what is called the instruction instruction decoder where this decoder will get this value and will produce the necessary control signal that will uh, uh, perform a certain operation in uh, in the microprocessor for example load the data just like what we learned in digital design right this control signal is to load the data from the memory put in the micro uh, internal register or to add the number right so it's the dependent on the control signal just like what we did in uh, digital design okay so this instruction is used to instruct the microprocessor to do a task a job all right so that is called the uh, instruction and instruction set architecture is actually how we encode this thing in the uh, in the uh, uh, machine language for example we want to do add all right so in our microprocessor or in Intel microprocessor or in other microprocessor how is this encoded is it is it like this and of course this is not the, not the same arm at for arm is different uh, from uh, at in Intel eh? but the operation is similar 
only that how is this encoded in machine code right so that is the uh, the instruction set architecture and let's see in uh, in ARM microprocessor how is this uh, encoded okay before that let's look at this uh, this part the instruction themselves can be in of different length depending on the processor architecture this is very important so for example we have 8 bit encoding 16 32 bit or even 64 all right for the uh, big microprocessor like intel we have uh, 64 bit instruction all right but for rs for rsc normally the size of the instruction is uh, is fixed eh? either 16 bit or 32 bit but for our uh, cisc processor the instruction can be 8 bit can be 16 can be 32 can be 64 in uh, in one microprocessor all right so this the the, the length of the uh, instruction can can be different eh, in one microprocessor but normally for rsc the length is uh, is fixed eh? for example the arm that we will learn later on we will use only we will have only 32 bit instruction uh, set okay so uh, let's look at the uh, this this is the conventional arm or the uh, arm instruction set eh? the original arm instruction set uh, where we have 16 bit and 32 bit instruction so for example this is the instruction all right so we have three instruction here the first one is cmp compare uh, r0 with number five so compare is a very very common uh, instruction in uh, every microprocessor because we we compare the number uh, we use or we in, in programming we compare all the time eh? compare for example if this equal to this we do this if not equal we do this right that is comparing so uh, this one is to compare the content of uh, register r0 with number five so if uh, the value is more than uh, five what to do if number is uh, less than five but what to do and normally it will set the uh, uh, the condition flag yeah if uh, the content of R0 is 5 means that the number is equal means that Z should be uh, the flag Z should be equal to 1 if uh, R0 is greater than 5 so the number should be positive and if uh, R0 is less than 5 the result should be should be uh, should be negative okay so it will give uh, the information about uh, what is inside R0, eh? whether it is equal to 5, more than 5 or less than 5. Eh? We can use compare instruction. And uh, compare is encoded into this eh, in our microprocessor, 2805. 2805 is in hexadecimal and it is 16-bit, right? Because uh, remember, one digit is 4-bit. So see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 by 4 is 16, so 16-bit. 16 and let's look at the second instruction, add R1 to uh with 10 eh? so 10 is add to the content of r1 and the size of this instruction is uh, 32 bit here is it is encoded to this number and uh move 8 the uh, mov is move move 8 to r2 means that we put number 8 to r2 and it is also uh 32 bit and this is encoded to this right this is called machine code this is called instruction or assembly language, right? So the computer will uh, always understand this, the machine code and not this one. Why? But why we have this? We have this because to write the program in machine code is difficult, is very hard. Eh? So for example, we want to compare number five with R0 and this is the code. And we, if we change to 6, the code is different already. So you need to open the manual, the ARM manual, and, and, and write one by one. And uh, this is very, very, very hard. And people will, uh, the programmer in the world, that will not do that, right? So uh, we introduce what we call the assembly language eh, to represent 
this machine code with a more uh, understandable uh, code all right so for example compare cmp is compare yes we know r0 with compare the content of r0 with number five yes and let the computer uh, translate this code and uh, this instruction into the machine code such that the microprocessor will understand the the uh, the instruction all right so when we open the manual uh, the r manual compare r05 is encoded into into this all right 16 bit uh, bit number 0 to bit number 15 okay so this is called uh, uh opcode right means that 00101 is uh, is compare rn is actually the uh, the register all right in this case it's r0 r0 uh, 000 and uh, 5 is we call it immediate 8 bit value and eh? this is 8 bit so let's see if we have something like this right uh sorry If we have 00101 and R n is register number 0, register number 0 is 000 3 bit. Yeah? In this case, represented by three, this 3 bit will uh, uh, encode or uh, it's mean the number, the register number. All right. If you change to 1, for example, this, this mean R1. If you change to 1 0 means that this is R2 and so on. In our case, in our instruction, we have R0. So this is 0, 0, 0. And this is the number that we want to compare with. So in this case, it's 5. 5 in 8 bit is 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1. So it is encoded into this. Machine language eh, for this instruction, and when we see in hexadecimal, this is uh, this is two, this is eight, this is zero, this is five, right? So that's why we have two eight. 2805. 2805. So when your computer, the instruction decoder, receives 2805 or this number, binary number, it will know exactly or it will do compare number 5 with the content of register R0. And uh, For add, uh, this is the code. For move, this number, this is the code, and so on. Okay, so that is how uh, the instruction is encoded, and this is called the instruction set architecture. So this is the architecture of uh, the instruction architecture of ARM microprocessor. And for other microprocessor, the encoding uh, format is different, right? This is unique for ARM microprocessor, right? But if you learn uh, this, yeah, you will, uh, when you want to, for example, want to change to Intel microprocessor uh, with this knowledge, uh, it will, uh, you will, uh, you will uh, be able to learn very fast because the concept is the same, yeah? except that the, the format is different, right? So now, let's uh, look at this. This is how the instruction is stored in uh, memory. And how the computer or the uh, microprocessor execute the instruction. So let's see how is this work. So in uh, 
memory for example we start from address this eh, 2000000 and it is stored in the memory like this eh, 2805 it is stored in memory 0528 because the size is 16 bit and remember the memory our memory is yeah 8 bit remember that 8 bit so we need to use two location in the memory to store this instruction so 0, 05 is stored first and followed by 28 why is it stored like this eh? not 2805 all right so this is uh, the way that the microprocessor this arm microprocessor stored the the data in the memory eh? This is called the uh, the Indian style. Eh? We will see in chapter three how we store the data in the memory in our microprocessor. Eh? It, and this is a little bit different from uh, from other type of microprocessor, right? So in this case, eh, just uh, know that we have zero five two eight, and let's and the next address eh, will be this one is stored. The next instruction, which is 0, 1 first, eh, it is separated into uh, 16 bit, 16 bit. So it, it is 0, 1 first, 0, 1, F1, F1, see, 0, 1, this is uh, for F1, 0, 1, and it will start with 0, 1 first, eh, the, the right hand side, the, the uh, 8 bit right hand side first, 0, 1. F1 and followed by the the next, which is uh, zero A. Uh, this is for zero one zero A. And again, we saw zero A first, zero A and followed by zero one. And uh, we can see that because this one is thirty two bit, yeah, the, this instruction is thirty two bit. So we will need four 8-bit location starting from this address 2, 3, 4, 5 to store this instruction alone. And the next instruction is this one, which is this one. And again, because this one is 32-bit, so that's why we need 32-bit. Yeah, four location of the memory is in order to store this instruction and again we start with 4f f0 4f f0 and then 08 to 02 0802 so that is how the instruction is stored in the memory all right and let's see how the microprocessor execute its instruction what happened to the content of the register and so on uh, when we execute each instruction let's see So, when the microprocessor execute the first instruction, here is the first instruction. So, remember the PC program counter must be pointed into the, into the next instruction to be executed, which is this. This is the next instruction to be executed, right? So, it is pointed to the next one, which is 20000. 0, 2 the PC when we execute this one and when we execute the next one here yeah, when we execute the next one which is uh, add add one with 10 all right as add add one with 10 so the PC will point to the next instruction so where is the next instruction here here is the next, right? F, this, this one. Okay, the next. See, the PC. And the content of uh, this register is must be depend on uh, what we have uh, done with this. Yeah. For example, this is add, uh, add 
1 with 10. So the previous art 1 is 3, right? 3. When you add 3 with 1, 0, right? 10, this 10 is decimal, yeah? We, we will see later on how to write decimal and uh, hexadecimal or binary in uh, assembly language. Yeah? Uh, in this case, when we write 10 like this, this is actually plus with 10 decimal. All right, so inside here is 3. C plus 10, so you have 13, right? 13. That's why 13 in hexadecimal is, uh, is D. That's why I add the, after you execute this instruction, you have D in, in, uh, in uh, this, R1, right? And when you execute this, 8 to R2, so you have, you should have 8 in, in R2, right? 8 in R2. So that is how uh, the microprocessor work in, uh, in basic, in fundamental. We will see in detail, in, uh, in the next chapter when we learn each instruction in detail right here is just for introduction to you yeah? uh, let's you know that the instruction that we will use later on like this will be actually encoded into the machine code like this yeah? and this is used uh, for microprocessor to understand what the operation that it need to do yeah? when uh, when uh, when we have this instruction, for example. Okay, so that should be for the instruction set architecture. And uh, one more thing is that the pipeline, this is just like uh, what I have introduced to you last week, uh, the pipeline, but this is uh, specific to the ARM microprocessor. Last week, uh, I show you the, uh, the pipeline that has uh, four stages. Eh? So for microprocess for a microprocessor, we have only three stages. Eh? We don't have write. All right. Remember last week we have another one write eh? at the end of this. So for a microprocessor, we have only three stage stages. All right. So the first one is fetch, means that you get the instruction from the memory. And then you decode the instruction in the instruction decoder and you execute. Yeah? We don't have write yeah? because write is we used another instruction, right? As the store instruction. Right? Write means that we write to the memory. Write to the memory, we use store instruction. Means that that is not included in, in the instruction itself. Yeah? For RISC, you see the even the pipeline is more simpler. Alright, as compared to CISSC. So remember, for ARM architecture, we have only three uh, pipeline uh, stages, uh, fetch, decode, execute. And uh, remember last lecture, uh, if we have this clock, uh, and this is the first instruction, uh, we don't need, to, uh, don't need to wait until the instruction is finished to begin the new instruction. Actually, when the first instruction is decoded, we can fetch the new instruction already. And this overlap will improve uh, or speed up the uh, instruction execution for the microprocessor. Right? So you, we can see we overlap the instruction here. This is one instruction. Yeah? This is one instruction. This is the next instruction. All right? Instead of continue here, we overlap. All right? Because we see the operation is different. When we fetch, when we decode here, the second one is fetch. And when we execute here, the second one is decode. And the next one can be fetch already. And so on. All right. So this will improve the uh, execution, uh, instruction execution significantly. You will learn this one in computer, computer architecture as well. All right. Okay. So... Uh, any uh, any any question before we go to the next? Okay, so if no question, uh, just a little bit more. Uh, we have the instruction set of the ARM microprocessor. So for ARM microprocessor, we have actually many version already because uh, ARM was introduced in uh, early 1980s. 
right? So uh, since then, the evolution of the instruction set is uh, is very. Uh, uh, we have many uh, changing in the, in the, or new architecture is was introduced to the to the original instruction set of the uh, microprocessor. Eh? So uh, initially, we have what is called the ARM conventional or ARM original instruction set. So this is the original instruction set eh? and the size is 32 bit. All right, all these instructions are 32 bit. All right, what is meant by 32 bit? Just now, uh, means that the machine code is in, 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 encoded into 32 bit in size eh, for each instruction. But later, it was introduced a uh, new instruction set or the subset of the instruction set, eh, the um, original instruction set, we call thumb one instruction set. So this thumb one instruction set is 16 bit in size. Eh? Means that the architecture is changed to 16 bit. Why? Why we are looking at 16 bit? So to reduce the size of instruction is uh, is a good thing actually, because we can reduce the size of the program. And uh, next we have thumb two instruction set. This one is uh, we have the original sixteen bit combined with more as one instruction, which is a uh, thirty two bit. Uh, because some operation actually need 32 bit as well eh? so that is uh, the meaning of 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 that so if we look at this we have what we call thumb 2 technology which is uh, uh, what we call a superset of the uh, thumb instruction set so original thumb instruction set or thumb one is only sixteen bit, right? And thumb two technology is uh, is thirty two bit and also the sixteen bit one. Eh? This is the new instruction set that is used by the modern ARM um, uh, processor, right? And of course the original one is uh, is outside. Eh? Here is the original one. Original. Um, instruction set. Right. So when we look at here, uh, before that, this is Cortex M3. The one that we will use in our course is uh, cover until uh, this. Uh. So it is not used uh, 16 bit actually, which is uh, mostly thumb 2 technology. Oh, sorry, it is just also 16 bit, yeah, including 16 bit and uh, 32 bit, yeah, and not cover all the 32 bit. All right, so when we look at this instruction, so uh, this is the list of the instruction actually, yeah. So we can see that, uh, for example, CMP is here, uh, CMP at uh, ADD. All right, so uh, when we look at this. Cortex M0 or M1 means that the instruction is only this. Uh, we have small number of instruction. So when we have Cortex M3, the number of instruction is bigger. See, uh, we have this one and also this one. There are many more instruction. Cortex M4 is bigger, so we will see that there is more instruction set. Uh, and of course, when you have a bigger microprocessor, the number of instruction is is bigger, right? So in uh, in our case, Cortex M3, so the number of instruction is this, eh? and we will not learn all of the instruction eh? because this is 
too many. Eh? We will learn a certain instruction set that is uh, important and sufficient for us to write a program. All right. For more uh, advanced instruction, so you can uh, try to learn by uh, look at the uh, uh, manual of the uh, uh, Cortex M3. Okay, so I think uh, that will uh, finish chapter 2. So after this, in chapter 3, we will learn all, uh, not all, we will learn some of the instruction set here. Right? How is this work? How to use it to write a program? Right? And uh, we will see also when we run that instruction, for example, what happened to the register in the microprocessor, what happened to the memory in the microprocessor. Right? And uh, we will learn how to use this to write a complete program for a microprocessor. All right, any question before we uh, uh, we, we, we end the session? Okay, if no question, so thank you very much. See you next week.